Hi, in this video I'll talk about dielectrics, dielectric materials and the polarization concept. So let's look at a parallel plate capacitor as shown in this image. You can see a plate on the left hand side and a plate on the right hand side and in between a yellow colored rectangular box which is the dielectric. In reality the plates would be much closer to each other and the dielectric very narrow but in order to see clearly I have made the box very wide. Inside the box you can see lots of things which represent molecules and they are colored red and blue because many molecules of dielectrics are having dipoles. In other words, the molecules have atoms where the center of the positive charges do not coincide with the centers of the negative charges. So each molecule may look like a rugby ball where one portion or one half of it is having a concentration of positive charges and the other half of the molecule is having a concentration of negative charges of all those atoms inside the molecule. And the molecules as a whole are oriented randomly in random directions as you can see here and there may be some movement among them due to thermal agitation uh, due to temperature and so on. But right now in this video we are concerned with electric field and how these uh, molecules behave under the application of an external electric field. So let's look at an animation of uh, uh, what to do with these things. So we will apply a positive charge to the left hand side capacitor plate and a negative charge to the right hand side capacitor plate, let's say from a battery. And we'll see what happens to these uh, molecules. The moment we apply a charge, there has to be an electric field. So electric field now will flow from right hand side to the left hand side. And you can see all these molecules turning. So each of these dipoles or twin poles get a torque and they rotate. And so that the negative part of these molecules are attracted to the positive plate and the positive part of these molecules have aligned with the negative plate. So let's look at it more slowly and let's look at a still image. So we just applied a positive charge to the left hand side plate and a negative charge to the right hand side plate. So all these molecules which are actually dipoles will get a moment, they'll get a torque and they'll twist such that the blue portions get attracted to the positive plate which is natural and the red portions of these molecules will turn so that they get attracted and stay attracted to the negatively charged plate. So far so good. After they are fully aligned we say they are polarized and they look like this. Now inside that yellow box dielectric you can see some plus charges on the right hand side and minus charges on the left hand side. That's happening because the red part of all the molecules is lined up on the right hand side. So obviously the dielectric will get a uh, positive charge inside the dielectric on the right hand side. If you look at the dielectrics left hand side you can see all the blue part of the molecules are lined up. So obviously the left hand side of the dielectric will accumulate some negative charges. So that's the explanation for those charges that happen inside the dielectric. The meaning of all these charges is that inside the dielectric there will be a small electric field flowing from the positive to the negative which means from right to left although the main field is flowing from the big red to the big minus. Let's look at a 2D representation. So here you don't have the dielectric you just have the capacitor plate on the left and on the right you have the positives lined up on the left and the negatives lined up on the right. So the electric field from positive to negative is shown as those blue arrows which is clear. Let's call this the main electric field or the applied electric field. Now we put in the dielectric and we see those small plus charges on the right hand side and the small minus charges on the left and that creates a the small electric field called EP or electric field due to polarization and those are those red arrows which are acting from right to left. I think this much is clear. Therefore as far as we are concerned as an observer looking at the capacitor as a whole, the resultant electric field in the capacitor, on the capacitor, will be the E main minus the EP. That means the blue arrows minus the red arrows going in the opposite direction. So the net resultant electric field is the most important that leads to the dielectric constant. So here is the way it's represented. The resultant electric field is smaller 
E main minus E P and it's also written as E resultant equal to E main divided by K and that K is a dielectric constant for whatever material we choose for putting in between those capacitor plates. The dielectric K is important because it improves the capability of the capacitor to hold charges. In other words, the capacitance of the capacitor. Let's look at a few materials here. So first is very important, vacuum, K is equal to 1. Why is it so? That's because in vacuum there are no molecules. There are no dipoles in between those two plates, if we can manage to do that. Therefore, there can't be any polarization, no torque, no dipoles getting aligned and so on. So for vacuum, K is equal to 1. For air, you can see it's almost 1, but slightly larger. And if we put paper, it becomes 3.5 and the K goes on increasing. If we put water in between those two plates, we can get a capacitance that is 80 times that of vacuum. That's the importance of the dielectric constant. So let's look at an animation again to visualize the polarization effect. So initially nothing, then we put charges, moment would put charges on the plates, you see uh, dipoles uh, having torque and realigning themselves. So that's all there is to the concept of polarization. I hope uh, this was uh, easy, interesting and clear for you. Thanks and have a great day.